Welcome, how are you? I'm here in Northern Virginia today and I'm starting out in Fairfax City in this shopping center where a place called Mama's Taste is located. I learned that here at Mama's Taste there is this person, this woman named Mrs. Wu who is responsible for a so-called homemade menu that includes homemade dumplings, homemade noodles, and homemade dessert. Uh, I'm really eager to find out uh, how good the dumplings are, the ones that uh, this Mrs. Wu is supposedly uh, in charge of making. I'm gonna start here at Mama's Taste, find out what they're all about, and then go somewhere else here in Northern Virginia and have a day of it. So let's get started. Okay, all the food is out, and I'm gonna begin with the tomato and egg handmade noodles. Uh, this is a dish that's popular in northern China, I think in uh, Xi'an and other places. Uh, I couldn't resist, even though I'm focusing on dumplings. <laughs> uh, I saw it on the menu, I couldn't resist. I wanted to try this. So let me, let me dig in. Yes, it's a, it's a dense mass of noodles, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to mix it up and uh, integrate the eggs and tomatoes into the noodles. All right, ooh, it's a lot. It's a very generous portion of noodles. Whoa. Mmm. Whoa. They're very slick against the chopsticks, and in fact, I'm tempted to use a fork because you can really grab it with the fork very readily. I might lose some street cred though if I use the fork. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the chopsticks. Mmm. Yeah, I can tell right away that those are some really good noodles. The, the texture on the noodles are definitely handmade. Nice al dente noodles that are firm yet kind of chewy. Yeah, the thing about tomato and eggs, it's a very Chinese combination. I mean, I grew up eating tomato and eggs, usually over rice, and usually you would have a protein uh, in that dish, usually beef. So the Cantonese-style tomato and eggs usually would include beef, for example, uh, and it would be, again, it would be served over rice. This northern-style tomato and egg noodles is not something I've had a whole lot of but uh, it does hit some of those nostalgic buttons for me because tomato and eggs is such a homey combination. Yes, and I'm going to fall to my temptation now because I, I really want to pick up that fork. <laughs> Eat it like a bowl of pasta, basically. Whoa. And once you lather up the noodles with the, with the sauce of the tomato and eggs, you get the tomato and egg flavor really nicely as it's, as it's lubricated into that mass of noodles. Well, let me move on. I wanna start with, uh, start with the pan-fried fish dumplings. And as you can see, they're nicely seared on the bottom. And I get this kind of soy vinegar sauce to dip them in. Mmm. The skin is not too thin, not too thick. They really nail that happy medium in the middle. So they really they really nailed it in terms of the in terms of the outside wrapper. Yet yeah, the inside filling is very nice. The fish is really good, and it reminds me vaguely of fish cake, but it is not that. The interior you wouldn't have some of the kind of starchy binding fillers that you would have in fish cake, and so this is really really good. Mm. And this dipping sauce, it really complements the dumplings nicely. These might be the best fish dumplings I think I've ever had. Wow, that's good. But let me move on. I got the pork pan fried dumplings as well. Oh my God. I bit into it and juice flew out in all directions. Okay, with the pork dumpling, you have a really soft, 
tender pork filling. There's no coarseness at all. I mean, that's just some smooth pork with the same wrapper, obviously, as the fish dumpling. This thing is so moist and juicy that it gushes, almost like a soup dumpling when you bite into it. Wow. These are some of the best dumplings I think I've had in a long, long while. <laughs> wow. I got a third plate of dumplings as well, these steamed shrimp dumplings. I wanted to see how these dumplings tasted steamed. <laughs> and here goes. The shrimp dumpling is very, very good. And interestingly, the shrimp is wrapped with a thin layer of pork. Interesting, and it's very good. It has a nice bouncy kind of muscular shrimp texture, but it's really unusual because the, the wrapping around the shrimp is very thin, paper thin. Mm. Couldn't help it, but I had to get dessert. They have sweet rice balls on the menu here, and this is a very Chinese dessert. Basically glutinous rice uh, on the outside, and there's an interior filling of uh, black sesame and uh, peanut in a, in a paste. So there's a yellow ball and a purple ball. <laughs> the purple one is made from purple yam, like the Filipino ube. And the, yeah, so the yellowish orange one is pumpkin. Let me, <laughs> let me dig in. Ooh, it's floating in this kind of syrupy liquid slash soup. <laughs> Ooh. Whoa, this is good. Okay, you have that kind of glutinous mochi-like exterior. And certainly that is, that is very good. It's a very pleasing texture, if you're, if you're familiar with those sorts of textures. Very kind of gelatinous and gooey. But that filling, whoa. That is a really good filling. The, the, the peanuts and the sesame flavor is really prominent. Mm. Okay, Mrs. Wu, who is responsible for the dumplings here and the noodles, really, really did a fantastic job on these uh, sweet rice balls. Wow, that filling is, filling is so good. All right, let me, let me try this. Wow, okay, it, admittedly, the exterior glutinous rice is not a whole lot different between the purple one and the yellowish orange one. The purple yam and the, the pumpkin is added probably mostly for the color. It gives it a nice visual appeal. But what really captures your attention on these dessert balls <laughs> is that filling. Wow, it is so good. But the totality of it is, you have this kind of really gushy, gooey texture because the filling is also very gooey, but it's really good. I mean, the quality of the filling is very, very obvious. So I'm gonna head out to the next spot, but before I do that, let me just reiterate. Uh, what I got today were the things on the so-called homemade menu. It's a separate menu. You'll see it if you come here. It's a little placard sitting on the front counter there. <laughs> That's the food that Mrs. Wu is responsible for making. The dumplings, the handmade noodles, the glutinous rice balls that I just had. <laughs> okay, that's a spectacular array of homemade things. And yes, everything is homemade. Uh, the reason why those sweet rice balls are so good, they grind their own peanuts here. They toast the peanuts and then they, they, they pound the peanuts into a paste. They make their own noodles. They make their own uh, dumpling wrappers. They're handmade and, and just given so much love and attention. Those dumpling wrappers are just perfect. I'm at uh, Tasty Dumpling. 
here in Falls Church and uh, I noticed right away that uh, Tasty Dumpling kind of color codes their dumplings. In other words, the exterior skin is of a different color depending on what you order. So I got their, what they call the mixed box or, or the mixed set, it's 12 pieces. And uh, let me just decipher it real quick. The yellow one I think is the beef and black pepper. So let me start with that because I can see the yellow one quite clearly. And it comes with uh, two different uh, dipping sauces. One is a spicy one and the other one is a clearer one. So I'm gonna dip it in the clearer one first. I think that's the soy vinegar. Mm. And yes, I can taste the, the pepper in there. There's a nice pronounced peppery flavor to it. If you recall, I said that the Mama's Taste dumpling wrappers were in that very happy medium of not being too thick or too thin right there in the middle and they just nailed it. Here, I wouldn't say they're too thin, but they're definitely on that thin side of the spectrum. There's a kind of pinkish one. I guess I'll have to bite it and find out what exactly this is. Oh. This is the lemongrass chicken, I think. There's a uh, chicken meat on the inside. That's the only chicken one I order, so yeah. Lemongrass chicken, wow. There's a lot of lemongrass in here. So what I've noticed so far is that the meats in these dumplings here are very dense. I mean, they pack a punch in terms of just the, the substance of what the dumpling is. I mean, it, they're, they're filled quite nicely. Here's a kind of uncolored one. It just seems natural. Uh, I guess I'll find out what it is. Mmm. Whoa. Yeah, that's the, I think this is the pork dumpling. This is the pork dumpling, I believe. Let me, let me try it in the chili spicy sauce. Adds a little kick to it, but it's not terribly spicy. All right, I grabbed another one. I'm getting confused about these colors. <laughs> this one is kind of greenish and white. Oh, this is the kimchi dumpling, I believe. That kimchi dumpling is good, but it's not as solid as the ones filled with meat. All right, the last item I got is the pan-fried bao. You can either order it with pork or beef, and I got the beef. The owner tells me that the beef pan-fried bao is the more popular one. And whoa, look at this. It's much bigger than the dumplings. It's, uh, it's quite uh, a chunky looking thing. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. Mm. I bit into that thing and that squirted juice onto my plate. Yeah, I can see clearly on the inside there's minced beef, there's some carrots and some chopped up uh, cellophane noodles or mung bean noodles of some sort. Uh, That's quite good. Bows of this sort can be a little bit thick, but this one, they nailed it. It's not too thin, not too thick, and it's quite, quite, uh, quite good. Very crispy, actually. They seared this very nicely on the bottom and on the top, basically. And it's flavored very well, such that you don't really need to dip this thing unless you want to make it spicy. This thing is very independent. <laughs> It's got its act together. This is very good. I could easily eat multiple, <laughs> multiple pan-fried bows here. They really nailed it on the bows. The meat is delicious. And the outer skin is just perfect. I mean, there's a doughiness and, interestingly, a flaky quality too, which is something you don't find very often in these sorts of bows. They tend to be much more toward the doughy side of the spectrum. But there's a 
there's a slight flakiness to it, a lightness to it that is very impressive. that concludes another episode thank you for watching this dumpling episode around northern Virginia so if you have a chance go to mama's taste in Fairfax City uh, come here to tasty dumpling in Falls Church and try these places out for yourselves uh, well worth the visit uh, so uh, try them out if you can I'm gonna <laughs> I think I'm going to sit here for a little bit and warm up before I leave. If you have any thoughts about the dumplings I ate today, leave me a comment in the comments section. And if you like the content of my channel, please consider subscribing. And finally, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. So until next time, until my next adventure, this is Vlablonski. Bye-bye.